Greetings, my fellow from the South and Tinkers at All Three Views Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's date is Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. Yes, it's warm, sunny, clouds are scattered around now and then, and a few thunderstorms along the way. I'm at Squiggy's Pizza, New York Pizzeria, located at 207 Southwest 2nd Street, which is at Hemershee Street, in the heart of downtown Fort Lauderdale. Mom and Pa Pizza Place. Dudes are Italian. One chap from Jersey, one from Sicily, other two from the Bronx. Ain't that dandy. Don't worry, it's not the corporate funded kind of pizzeria either. So, good stuff, good vibe. Support local shops. And don't be shy to tell them, look, you look the third has sent you. Yeah, so, um, it's still a little fear of Mom Green with the. Uh, Hot air, Robert Mueller still want to go after President Trump, and people are reacting like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And, we, and, and, and people like have this crucifixion of hating a man, loving a man, and nothing in between. Well, what I can tell everyone in the past, you got to watch out for the fear factor, because that's part of Edward Bernays' propaganda playbook. Get the book, check it out, don't be shy, look it up online, archive.org has, has it, archive.org. Which is a digital library based out of San Francisco. I know I have uh, announced that a few times, but it is a real good website to check it out. Or not go to the library. It's like 130 pages long. Yeah, and another thing, too, of course, everyone made a big stink about. Big, I can't say big stink, but they made a big thing about uh, the Baker Bakery, Masterpiece Bakery in Colorado, which the 17 decision, Supreme Court Justice Justices favored the, ba- the bakery. The, the, the bakery sh- shop over there, of the whole, they refused to um, they refuse in the service of a gay couple getting ready to get getting ready to get, uh, or propose or trying to get a ready kid going for their uh, marriage, and they tried they took it to the Colorado Civil Rights Division, and they of course the city condemned them all, so they appealed to the Supreme Court and made that favor. And I'll be very frank. The people, the folks in that civil division, we need to start examining Article 2 of their state constitution entitled Bill of Rights. And based on that, Article 2, Section 3, 11, and 28 are self-explanatory. Inalienable rights, ex post facto law, and enumerating of rights. I can say religious freedom. I can make that statement, but yeah, I'm, I'm saying it's more in the bigger picture. And one thing I disagree on in that article, too, is 30, 30B about rights are not really, um, are not really uh, offered or protected if you're homosexual, bisexual, etc. Because I always support rights of individuals. That's not my practice. I don't really agree on it. Honorably, but I'm not here to condemn the person either. There's a lot of beautiful people in that community that do care about families and children and all that. And not all, they're not sexual perverts, and that's completely irrelevant. Because you, you got sick people in all walks of life. So I'll just make that clear. But, uh, yes, so, of course, there's more people out there. So we want to do much for our lives. We want to do a bus tour around the country. And of course, let these folks know once again, Watch for Our Lives is run by CA Corporation based out of Plantation, Florida. They are actually helped funding this cause. It was never created by the children. It was grown adults. Let's look up CA Corporation for March for Our Lives. That's why I tell folks that is pretty dangerous when they try to use these terrific events and train our kids to be like the Khmer Rouge and have Pol Pot as their Lord and Savior to change the world, register to vote so we can make tougher gun laws. Well, farm laws and all that. I'll tell you one thing. Farm rights are natural rights under Article 1, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution. If you not support registration, it violates the right to privacy under Article 1, Section 23 of the state. Constitution. In addition, Roe versus Wade in 1973. If everyone assumes it's about abortion, in reality, it's the right to privacy. So, if you're gonna, if you support 
the right of privacy of people to have the women to have right to choose for an abortion, you got to support it across the board. No ends, ifs, or buts. And all the little kids that want to register to vote, you better start look, looking at the bigger picture rather than listening to some bobbleheads or focus on base diet because you can get duped, pumped, and step on your own bear trap. And don't worry, we've all been swindled one way or the other, including myself. But I've taken the time to learn from it and become a smarter individual. And I encourage everyone out there to don't be an trapaholic. All right. So speaking of all these things, we gotta be. I actually have to start the start the show off right from the American Free Press, and this is about mainly globalism. And of course, it's real cute. And on the conspiracy buzz, Bilderberg officially announces topics attendees. It's happening in Italy this year. And as it reads here, early in the morning on June 5th, the Shawi Global's group known as Bilderberg officially released the location of its 2018 gathering as well as a list of its attendees. So the AFP staff, in advance of its annual gathering, June 8th to the 10th, Bilderberg posted to a website list of topics on its agenda as well as the attendees who will be there when the shadowy globalist group gathers this upcoming weekend. So all you bend over bobs and barbies will be there spreading their butt cheeks to the new world order. I'm like, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to take the time to look at it. Every year behind locked and guarded doors, 200 to 100, 120 to 140 of the Western world's most powerful business executives, executives, banks, bankers, financial speculators, bureaucrats, and politicians gathered together in secret as a five star, at a five-star resort somewhere in Europe or North America to discuss the most pressing issues of the day and figuring out ways to profit off of them, yeah, including you and I, my friends. All you fellow activists out there, bitch, let me start paying attention. This year, Bilderberg picked Turin, Italy, for its meeting location. AFP exposed the secret meeting site months ago, but Bilderberg officially confirmed this on June 5th in an official press release. The global group has not identified what resort it bought out to host the meeting, but early reports indicate it will likely be the NH Torino Lingado Congress Hotel in Turin. AFP attempted to back to book a room for the weekend of June 8th and 9th, but the entire resort was booked solid. A good indication that this will be the place. No one, To no one's surprise, a press release by the Bilderberg Group identified the key topics of the CONFA, which will include U.S. politics in the age of President Donald Trump, as well as the rise of populism. Specifically, Bilderberg listed the following topics on its website. Populism in Europe, in the inequality challenge, the future of work, artificial intelligence. That's right. Don't be surprised if they're going to be starting talking about automated artillery, like Terminators, d- heavier drones, and of course, d- drone crafted tanks. U.S. before midterms, free trade, U.S. world leadership, Russia, quantum computing, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. The post truth world in current events. As of today, 128 participants from 23 countries have confirmed their attendance. As ever, a diverse group of political leaders and experts in the industry, finance, academia, and the media has been invited. Bilderberg Press release noted. Brave attendees of Bilderberg will be there this year, including Henry Kissinger, yet the warmongering Demina, Robert Rubin, and Lawrence Summers. Of note, however, that James H. Baker from the Pentagon will be attending as well as PayPal fine founder and noted conservative libertarian Peter Thayer. Ooh, interesting, right? In his press release, Bilderberg teased readers by acknowledging that attendees follow so called Chandon House rules, meaning they are forbidden from discussing what transpires at the event. Only recently, however, has Bilderberg come out of the closet officially. For years, the group has de- was deadly serious about maintaining its secrecy and forcing a strict blackout on reports in the mainstream media. 
And we will just check out these attendees who are going to be there today, shall we? It's on the BuddleburgMeetings.org. It's in Turin, Italy, 7th through the 10th. Absolutely. And we're just going to... Before I do that, I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. And um, let's check out the attendees. I like it's maybe a long little list here. Of course, you got Henry D. Castries, chairman of the Institute Montage, Montage from France. Who'll be the chairman? No, but you got participants here from all walks of life. Marcus Agus, Alberto Elcina. From Ooh, from Italy, from Harvard University, and, and the founder and senior chairman for Evercore, Roger C. Altman. How nice. Well, the, and there's a big list here. There's, there's, a, there's a link on that for the, um, under America Free Press. And I'm just seeing here, oh, Sylvia M. Burrow from President of American University is going to be there. How nice. And, of course, Prime Minister Anna Bern, Bernabic from Serbia. That's cute. Yeah, of course, you expect these clowns to be in here. And of course, the Minister of France, Public Expenditure and Reform, Pascal Donahoe from Ireland. And yeah, all these New World Order individuals. Of course, Bernard M. A., Director General Ministry of the Armed Forces. And of course, Johnny Fallow, Fallow, writer and journalist, is going to be there. And what else we got here? Ooh, Stanley Fisher. Former Vice Chairman, Federal Reserve, former Governor, and of course, Bank of Israel. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so it's so funny when you see some of these people. Oh wait, check this out. John Hankelooper, Governor of Colorado, is going to be there. So all you folks in the Rocky Mountain State, you better start paying attention. He just declared himself to be a bend over Bob to the New World Order. All these globalists, Uncle Tom's and Angel Mamas at the at his finest. And we'll just keep on scrolling down here. Of course, you got Matt D Davish Machen, CEO from Icon IQ Capital. All right, and of course, you got Chief and Editor from The Economist, Bidos, Zanny M Minton Bidos. So, so you folks out there, if you if you if you really want to pay attention. You better start looking at these people. Like if you if you map it over to the Economist, you gotta see a far stooge in there as well. And of course, Global Economist and Arthur Arthur from the USA. Dambi Dambizi Dambiza F. Moyo. And we can go on here. Emeritus Honorary Professor of Philosophy, University of Cambridge, Cambridge, or Nora O'Neill. Of course, editor of London Livy Standard, jo George Osborne. They call him Jorge. And of course, the Vatican. Oh, yeah. The Holy Ones. Do the Hail Mary to go, Lord, please have a new world order under Jesus' name. Amen. The one and only blasphemous H. E. Petro Porolin, Cardinal and Secretary of State of the Vatican. Yes, church and state does exist in Italy. And we can go on here from the Netherlands. Prime Minister Mark Rutte. And, oh, this is nice. Robert E. Rubin, co-chairman, Emirates, Council on Foreign Relations, and former Secretary Treasurer. And with this, let's see how far it goes. Ooh, yeah. And, of course, Secretary General NATO John Stalinberg is going to be there. And um, President... Peter, uh, actually, President Ty Teal Capital, Peter Teal, is going to be there. <laughs> Called conservative libertarian. Oh, yeah, all right. Another butt lug as usual. And, of course, from Austria, Jahard Zeller, President of Turner International. Just to give you those folks a few examples. Oh, yeah, another thing, too. Directs for China, National Security Council. Tr um, Matthew Turbin. Well, I'm gonna, so the list is on there on that article. Maybe folks can really look how kind of scumbags are going to be there. There's a good amount of them. There'll be 10 in this meeting. And, and so, it, like I said, hey, 
So if I meet the government car and I'm say, hey, how's it feel being a bend over by up to the New World Order? He gets offended too effing bad. These are the kind of people that makes John Jay roll his grave, okay, of foreign influences. And that's the kind of clowns you want? Give me a break. And of course, the press releases and all that. Yep, the announcement right there is all, and it's, it's all self-explanatory. But definitely, you should take a look at it, learn about the Bilderbergs, and remember, they're just part of it. It's under that same One World Order umbrella. They're not the whole enchilada. It's just a part piece of the pie. That would be a great way of saying it. I know one thing. If people in Italy just go out there and raise some hell, okay? Because I know the nationalism is getting pretty big over there. But you got one thing about these movements. You got to make sure it's completely organic, not intervened by some of these global hacks. It happens a lot. And they're being exposed little by little. So it's one thing I always tell my friends. You always got to like look at things a lot bigger than what it is. It's not the core. It's just part of it. And uh, that is it on that. So go there. Give them hell. Especially that gentleman from the Vatican. Just throw some holy water on me when you, when, you, when you have a chance. There's nothing more than pure blasphemy. All right, so we're gonna head on over here. It, this is actually from LandDestroyer.com. Came out earlier today. U.S. regime changes and its armies of garbage. America's color revolution are posed by the Western media to portray opposition as daring heroes. However, the truth is far less flattering, even compromising. It is by Tony Carlucci from New Eastern Outlook. Had James Buchanan, writer for The Guardian, his article, His Country Has No Freedom. How Thailand's punks are railing against the uh, junta. Told the truth about who uh, Kitakia, pure punk captain, was the, was in the subculture of substance abuse and women beating he represented. The article likely would never have been published. But telling the truth is not the business. The Guardian is in. Telling narratives that buttress the U.S. U.S. European corporate driven agenda is, and the agenda for Thailand is regime change. Just as the uh, Western media sold the world tales of brutal terrorists representing freedom and democracy in nations like Libya and Syria in 2011, or right wing Nazi groups in Ukraine in 2014, the Western media is rummaging through the lowest common denominator in Thai society to portray a fringe anti government movement as a popular uprising. To that end, Buchanan's article portrays drug out of women beaters like Captain as dis disingenuously as he does Thailand's political crisis. His article claims anger at repression is quelled under the military dictatorship but the country's punk scene is turning the protest volume up again. It continued a provocative slogan directed at Junta leader Prederu Chanocha have helped, I mean, helped the event's Facebook page go viral between the interests of pro-democracy activists and putting the small underground scene in the national spotlight. Pro-democracy is like major, majority plus one, mob rule. So that's why I don't buy that rhetoric with all due respect. Despite Purdue Chen Chowa being Prime Minister of Thailand, the Western media has repeatedly used the slur Junta leader to depict both the Prime Minister himself and the nation's government as a backwards Third World Dictatorship. Yet, no mention is made of what participated the 2014 military coup in Thailand that brought both power, not by Buchanan and The Guardian, not elsewhere, not anywhere else across the Western media. Western media's contempt for context. The previous government was headed by U.S. backed billionaire, ex Prime Minister of Mass Murderer, and now fugitive Thakin Shinawatra via his own daughter, who openly ran as his proxy during the 2011 elections. After coming to power in 2011, Shinawatra immediately began amending laws to grant himself and his political enemies amnesty in a bid to return himself fully to power. A vote buying rice subsidy program that played a role in putting Shinawatra's political party into power also began unraveling. By 2014, nearly 1 million farmers were left, up, left unpaid with their rice stolen away to government warehouses. 
will test well to over 1 million people on key days in a bid to cling to power, Chino Rachua deployed heavily armed militants to attack protesters across the country, leaving over 20 dead. There were the same armed militias who targeted and killed in th soldiers in 2010, triggering weeks of violence, leaving nearly 100 dead in what became this ingenuously called in his article a military crackdown. Chino Rachua's government openly declared it did not recognize the court's authority. Police loyal to Chino Rachua who himself was a high-level police bureaucrat before becoming prime minister, refused to act. It was left to the military to intervene to restore the rule of law. Up until this week of the coup that finally removed Shinawadra from power, people were, were dying in the streets and families languished unpaid in equipment poverty induced by the Shinawatra's corruption. In this context, the coup would appear justified in most readers, which is precisely why this context is omitted in Buchanan's article and in articles across the Western media. So that's like always on one side. Remember, a lot of these um, um, sites that get connected with Stratford and allegedly AP and allegedly the Stratford. Now I'll just keep on going here. The women, the women beating freedom fire. This brings us back to Buchanan's article in an attempt to to portray Thailand's pug scene as a small but important part of the widespread opposition he claims exists. Friends close to Kitakia, Pure Punk Hatman, Kenpin, admit that he suffers from a lot of substance abuse, ranging from hard drugs and the abuse of prescription psychotropics to alcohol and butane fumes. He is also prone to fits of abuse and violence, directly generally at his girlfriend. Local news stories have frequently covered his erratic and at times criminal behavior which police believe is associated with mental illness. In one stance, Capman would punch his girlfriend in the face, knocking her to the ground before painfully grinding his Doc Mart boot on her forehead. Now remember, a lot of these Doc Martin boots now were originally from England, but they, they've been outsourced in China. Just to give you a glimpse. In other instances, her abuse have been caught on video now circulating on social media, including one where he is violently pulling his girlfriend's hair and grabbing her by the neck. Those in Captain's circle also regularly assault their girlfriends. Abuse against women is rampant throughout what Buchanan calls Thailand's punk subculture, but what is actually considered by Thai's Kaya Sankum, or Garbage Society, for obvious reasons. The only real common thread running through Garbage Society is abuse of oneself and of others and a complete inability to contribute positively to associate. While Campman dresses in a style and the less discerning could superficially consider punk, he clearly falls under Kaya Sankum. Yet to write an article exposing vocal supporters of U.S. backed regime change in Thailand as drug added, addled women, be, women beating garbage would only, pre, only prove critics of the opposition right that efforts to rush elections in Thailand are being spearheaded by U.S. backed billionaire fugitive Daskin Shinarada. Ratra, his political machine, U.S. funded students and NGOs and anyone unsafely and undignified enough to join in, including Thai society's garbage for a chance in the Western media spotlight. And as you see a little photo in the background here, someone's waving an ISIS flag and it has golden ridges around it. Oh yeah, all hail to maritime law. It's like ISIS is part of the one world order himself, part of the law of the sea, right? Just in the Western media allied itself and the worst of Libya, Syria, and Ukrainian society, its alliance with the drugs, the Thai society will eventually backfire as well. Such people have proven themselves notoriously unreliable, often overwhelmed by the attention they have desperately craved their entire lives and now suddenly have, exposing the true nature and dramatic and often very public episodes of violence and criminality. So for the Western media controls the narratives of nations like Thailand, which lack their own English language, media to tell the other side of the stories because people like Jane Buchanan and The Guardian intentionally omit awarding this honesty with impunity in front of international audiences. Yet, just like Libya, Syria, more recently in Ukraine regarding the Babchenko hoax where the West lies have mounted and eventually backfired, the clock is ticking for people like James Buchanan and the heroes he's manufacturing in Southeast Asia's Thailand. The winds of truth will eventually blow and when they do, they will take the credibility of those like you can and their lies away with them. Now that's one thing you gotta look at. I always gonna see the other side. That's why some of these movements of protests, if they're organic or, or funded. And uh, and I know too, like I say, it's a good faith. 
Even in the Iron Chess Board by the late Vigil Brzezinski, New World Order douchebag himself, may his soul rest in shame. He wants to leave nation for their own personal gain. They don't give a damn how much, how, how who will die and who will hire them and who will die for them. Well, that's just one of those areas. And now you, you see this um, Jack Lennon tr Halloween trick or treating style of protest with, with these punks, according to his article. So, how organic are they? <laughs> I don't know about that. But I can tell you one thing, my friend. I didn't wire from the explorer, so you bunch of wankers. What the hell you think you what the hell you think you're doing? And on the other hand, you got to always see what I know Thailand has their disputes, but how accurate is it? You always got drama everywhere you go. You're not gonna please everybody. But one thing I can say for sure, if the US is involved, the CIA and all that, you need a butt out. That's why I just that's just why I hate imperialism and it screws even good people in these particular institutions. And you know what? Let the people in Thailand decide what they want. And all these ISIS flags with the golden ridges around it, that's nothing more than a hot, that's nothing more than a masquerade party. Okay? That's that's one of the areas I'm getting tired of. And many people are not recognizing these things. They still drink the same damn Kool-Aid over and over again. However, there's a lot of folks out there are waking up and learning the patterns and processes. Thumbs up for them. And you know what? I'll say this, this is not going to work. It may backfire. People in Thailand aren't that dumb. They know they have their issues, but you know what? Let them handle it themselves. Ooh, okay, so the next one here came out today. Is it today? Uh, the actual kids one came out yesterday. And uh, this by Jay Cyropoulos from the Activist Post. Good site. And the Hair Council of Relations tells government that they have to use propaganda on Americans. And let's see how cute this really is, right? As I say, the Council of Foreign Relations delivered a willing presentation recently that surprisingly went unnoticed in the mainstream media. And we see as far as Richard Stengel forward the note that note the notion that governments have to direct propaganda at their own domestic population. The council is recognized as one of the United States' oldest and most establishment think tanks of the American power elite. And it often sets the agenda, the agenda on important policy questions. Or as former senior editor at the Washington Post, Richard Harwood, in comment on ruling class journalists, approvingly described as the council the nearest thing we have to a ruling establishment in the United States. Harwood admirably wrote, the member of these journalists in the council, however, they may think of themselves as an acknowledgement of their active and important role in public affairs and their ascension into the American working class. They do merely analyze and interpret foreign policy for the United States. They help make it, and they part of they are part of that assessment, whether they like it or not, sharing most of its values and worldviews. That's right, so they're part of the herd conformity, according to that quote. CFR is a key cog in, in the hub of Washington think tank promoting endless wars. As former Army Major Todd Pierce described think tanks as primary provocateurs using psychological suggestiveness to create a false narrative of danger from some foreign entity with the objective being to create paranoia within the U.S. population that is under intimate threat of attack or takeover. In late 2018, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange publicized the extensive sway the Council of Foreign Relations carried over U.S. media by tweeting a graphic created by U.S. Propaganda Research, a search, research and information project on geopolitical propaganda in Swiss media, which illustrates the heavy influence CFR exercises of the media narrative delivered to the public, i.e. domestic propaganda. And there's a tweet on there, too, so you can look it up yourself. So it's Council of Foreign Relations major to major media holdings. Let's just see what they have here. Like I said, it's always one of those things, you know, who's going to control who, what, where, and why. Very 1984 orientated, to be exact. And there's a big list. Disney. Disney. Warner Brothers. HBO. And David Gergen. Yeah, another butt lug, right? All these cute little slides. Washington Post. New York Times, Economist, Wall Street Journal, Fox News. Yep, Fox News. 
and CNN on the same ship of manure. <laughs> oh, man, I hope you love left, right media folks to see that. Of course, Daily Beast, Facebook, Google, YouTube, Associated Press, USA Today, Vice, Cartoon Network. They're all under the same boat. How cute is that? You find that, you find that inspiring? Yeah, I get my stuff from CNN or Fox News. Sky, The Sun, Forbes, Reuters, Political, Politico, LA Times, Slate, Foreign Policy, Foreign Affairs, Bloomberg, News Corp, New York Post, The Sun, The Times. The list goes on and on and on. You can see it for yourself. For the Bloomberg reading, yay! I came by January 28, 2018. Thanks for the Julius The illustration of the council's deeply entrenched media presence is based on official membership rosters complied by SPR, revealing the counter incorrectness of CFR's extensive mass media influence network in its main international affiliate group, the Bilderberg, covering mainly the U.S. and Europe, and the Toronto Commission covering North America, Europe, and East Asia. According to a report from Swiss Propaganda Research, latest in be noticed to the general public, many media executives and top journalists of almost all major U.S. news outlets have long been members of the Influential Council on Foreign Relations, established in 1920 as a private bipartisan organization to awaken America to its worldwide responsibilities. Yes, God bless the empire, right? In a more communicative and peaceable basis. The CFR disclosed the 500 elite members have for decades shaped U.S. foreign policy and public disclosure about it. As one a council member famously explained, the goal has indeed has been established to a global empire, a benevolent one, non-violent. Fingal, a former editor of Time magazine, told the audience at a CFR event in late April called political disruptions, combating disinformation, and fake news that governments have to direct propaganda toward their own population. As Council Council formulations formed by fake news, former editor of Time magazine, Richard Stinger, directly states that he supports the use of propaganda on American citizens, then shuts the session down with challenge about how propaganda is used against the third world. That's by uh, William, a tweet from William Cardick. In a full video, full video of CFR event shown below, Central openly argue in favor of propaganda against U.S. citizens starting at 1 hour 15 minutes 20 seconds, second part of the footage. And you can see the whole footage on that as well. Sanju, who's former high-level U.S. government official, head of office for the public diplomacy and public affairs at the State Department from 2013 to 2016, and a regular pundit on MSNBC, explained, basically every country creates their own narrative, story, and you know my old job and the State Department was what people used to jerk at the chief propaganda's job. We haven't talked about propaganda. I'm not against propaganda. Every country does it. They do it to their own population. Don't necessarily think that is awful. There has reports that Stengel's personal bio site store notes that he helped create oversee the Global Engagement Center as a State Department whose official mission is to counter propaganda and disinformation from international terrorist organizations in foreign countries, a special focus on Russia. Perhaps most ominous of all is the fact that a man who publicly say, says that he is not against propaganda on the U.S. government's own population was recently named a distinguished fellow as part of the Atlantic Council Digital Forensic Research Lab, TFR Lab. Yes, the same Atlantic Council that espouses a strongly anti-Russian agenda that is funded by Ukrainian billionaire Viktor Pinchuk, who has happily donated at least $10 million to the Clinton Foundation. Pinchuk just so happens to be the CTO and co-founder of CrowdStrike, a company used by the DNC to inspect their servers allegedly hacked by Russia after refusing FBI access to the same servers. Can we say inside job? Absolutely. Obviously, it seems to be very particular behavior, peculiar behavior by the DNC to refuse FBI access to serve their servers instead of relying on a private company unless they had, they had an ul- ulterior motive. Consequently, the assessment by Crossbreak was viewed as a basis for what eventually resulted in a disappointment 
a special counsel, Robert Mueller. Yeah. Ironically, just two weeks ago, the DFR lab announced that his team has partnered with Facebook to monitor this information and protect elections. DFR lab defined the new initiative as follows. Uh, the Atlanta Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab today announced a partnership with Facebook to independently monitor this information and vulnerabilities in elections around the world. The effort is part of the initiative to help provide further research about the role of social media and elections, in elections as well as more democracy, more generally. The Digital Forensic Research Lab is launching a partnership with Facebook to support the world of its community and its effort to strengthen democracy. Do you see the little pretty, these little nice little cute Facebook commercials on there of protecting privacy and all that? And, and censor you, fact checks, and all that garbage. I know that for sure. Happened to me one time or another. But you know what? I knew the game for a long time, my friend. I'm no expert. It's called paying attention. But one thing about it, what, what they're doing right now is inspiring others to create their own social media sites. Decentralization is the way to go. And I got a lot more. You know, I've been putting a lot more stuff on so, other social media sites. And I, I'll explain it all you know, after you know, my show will be almost done. As if on cue, with an ult, un, ultimately all the Orwellian field, Facebook announced on June 2nd, 2018, that the user generated trending news section will be replaced by a breaking news section, which will be comp comprised of 80 publications selected by Facebook that will feed approved content to users. Facebook will essentially have complete control of topics and narratives that are fed to the users in a clear act of social engineering, which will give social media giant and their political ideological allies the ability to directly manipulate people's perceptions of any event. Right off of Edward Davis' playbook. Just gotta read that book, please. During the 2016 election, leaked intent internal documents from Facebook reveal that the editors in charge of the company's trending news section revealing discriminate against conservative articles while promoting progressive content, which has resulted in the threat of an investigation from the Senate Commerce Committee. A new, the new changes were explained in the Friday announcement. Breaking news label, a, a test were running with 80 publishers across North America, South America, Europe, India, and Australia. Let publishers put a breaking news indicator on their post news, post and news feed, where are also testing breaking news notifications today, and we're testing a dedicated section on Facebook called Today, and that connects people to the latest breaking and important news from local publishers in their city, as well as updates from local officials and organizations. News and video watch. We will soon have a dedicated section on Facebook watch in the U.S. where people can view live coverage, daily news briefings, weekly deep dives that are exclusive to watch. So when the CFR people be advocating the social, social benefits of domestic propaganda and Facebook is jettisoning, just jettisoning an already merged user-generated trending news section and align itself with an anti-Russia couldn't connect the think tank, Americans should be keenly aware, be keenly aware that they are being actively propaganda and they should work to intentionally diversify by the news sources as an omnipotent mass propaganda regime is being convert covertly implemented. Absolutely. So that's one of the areas we have to see, my friend. It's all about dominance and control, what they want you to send out, what you post, or not. I'm not too surprised at all how this going on with Facebook. And you know what? I always love using the enemy's tools. All in good things. You have to be vigilant. You got, don't complain. Take action. That's why, remember, Facebook is a private corporation. Shareholders, okay? By the stocks and all that. I say buy their stocks and you can change the time. That would be better off, right? Don't be surprised if all the overwhelming snow vampires got a hold of those shares. And one of the areas, my, my one of my solutions is look for more social media sites to check out. I, I, I have a whole I'm on a whole bunch of them right now and use them, utilize them, and they're not they don't have those Facebook attributes or Twitter attributes. Do what you can, make it work, don't complain, but take action.
Cool, so next one here. That's the key from Bob Livingston's Alert. And it's uh, published by Personal Liberty Media Group. And this one's been called, entitled Apocalypse and Perpetual War. The typical American has no idea that the politics we see is not reality. True politics operates behind the scenes and is carried out in a smoky room by the unseen adept who are seconds of those who have ruled the world for thousands of years. The politics we see as a charade designed to keep us distracted and befuddled as each other's throat in slight slate of hand as death, death by any David Copperfield, David Copperfield illusion. This is true of national politics, but especially true of international politics. It is grand design to coerce people into giving up their wealth and freedom willingly. Guilt trip. You make all this money, you've earned it, but we're going to condemn you. You're being punished on being a productive person. Government since the Roman Empire have created enemies to instill fear in the population. So that people are manipulated into giving more police power over the government. Politicians always go along with this Machiavellian deception. As Adolf Hitler said, how fortunate for leaders that men do not think. It's going on today. It's like our Mary C was going on. It's the same old song and dance, same propaganda, garbage, deception, in a different package. Human freedom is impossible until people understand the politics under any label. In the welfare state, in the warfare state, is the art of political persuasion to get the people to believe, to act, and to live against their best interests. And we do, and do so. We turn in, we turn to American policy in the Middle East in general and toward Israel in particular. This has been a hot topic of discussion of, of late due in large part of Donald Trump's decision to open an embassy in Jerusalem. American conservatives and mostly, especially in evangelical Christians, cheer Trump moves and seem to view as some sort of fulfillment of prophecy. My recent rights criticizing American policy toward Israel and Iran have brought out all the heavy artillery. It seems I can't say anything at, at all criticize America's government and leaders and rarely get any feedback. But then I write something, about, something negative about America's policy of Israel, all hell breaks loose. It happens all the time, nothing new at all, right? There are two reasons for this. First, the control of the, the Israeli lobby holds over American media, American politicians, politics, and American politicians. The second is most egregious is because of erroneous or false Christian teaching on Israel. According to Merriam Webster, Webster, apocalypse is a doctrine concerning an intimate end of the world and an ensuing general resurrection of foul judgment. The old American, the old American Heritage Dictionary, I have kept at my desk for dozens of years, defined it as a general belief in the intimate destruction of the world. Christian eschatology, a prophetic interpretation concerning the last days, is associated with the Book of Revelation. The Book of Revelation and apocalypse have come to have some synonymous meaning. Almost all Christians today believe that the fulfillment of the book of Revelation is in the future, with emphasis of the near on the near future and the second coming of Christ. Most people, especially Americans, have over the entirety of our nation's history been saturated with apocalyptic writings, mostly based on biblical prophecy with futurist interpretation. Ooh, sorry about that. Fundamentalist Christians Expecting the rise of the Antichrist, the rapture, and the thousand years of Christ's rule, are looking at the Middle East and wondering where the rise of the dragon is intimate. The populistic conversation can turn, can turn ugly in a few seconds. Somehow, people by nature are attracted to the end of apocalypse. apocalypse. They seem to love tragedy and horror and to be obsessed with predictions of the future. Look, I cut them out here with a little kid having pizza, and it's a good time. No big deal. I think I'd have a great time. I do show the funny people. <laughs> I, I do like it. Most all apocalyptic teaching is presented in biblical language as if it were the direct teaching of the Bible. In fact, there are religious codes that base their entire teaching on apocalypse. Such false teachings have on numerous occasions prompted by people by the hundreds to sell their possessions, don white robes, climb to a mountaintop, and await Christ's coming based on various interpretations of the symbolic future. We silently ignored a very obvious proclamation and first the um these alert uh, ooh these Thessalonians 
chapter 5, verse 1 through 3. It says here, Now consider the time and the reasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then some, then some destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. I remember reading about that too a long time ago, that, that, that quote. And one thing, see, one thing about peace and security, they announce it. That's like the end of tribulation. So I will continue on here. In other words, the only Father knows the day and time, and anyone telling you anything else is a false prophet. Apocalypticism is a type of fatalism that neutralizes human action and resistance to tyranny. It is a syndrome of inviolability which prompts us to think that there is nothing that we can do about it. We can do about anything. Governments along with organized religion have seized upon populism to promote wars, encourage false patriotism, and regiment populations because of the divine nature of the crisis. Hardly a week goes by that I don't, I don't get apocalyptic letters, quotes, or other media from readers. Apocalypticism is ingrained so deeply that it is sacri sacrosanct. No one dares question future interpretation of the prophecy. For most Christians is based on it. A professional dis of disbelief is a tenement to hearsay, as is any notion that the U.S. doesn't own blind allegiance to the modern nation of Israel. Populism supports and justifies political actions and a long-range planning. Most professing Christians today believe that the establishment of national Israel is modern history is continuing to fulfill a prophecy. Whether the U.S. government does the support of the national goals of Israel is never questioned by the American people because they believe that as, born, as according to the divine will. That is how organized religion came to support Zionism. Of course, it was the two separate movements. Judaism and Zionism were two separate, mo two separate entities. Okay? Without suspicion on the part of the people. Remember that. I have told you in the past that modern Zionism has nothing to do with Jews or Judaism. Yeah. Therefore, criticism of Zionism is not anti-Semitism. Though Zionists have long used the claim of, of anti-Semitism to quell all criticism. There are no Jews who are not Zionists, and there are Zionists who are not Jews. In Genesis chapter 12, 12 verse 1 through 3, God gave a blessing to Abraham, Abraham saying, Go, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. And make your name great so that you will be a blessing i will bless you i'll bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you i will curse and all and you all the families of the earth shall be blessed upon this rest the christians believe that the modern day physical nation of israel is somehow special very Orwellian indeed, right? God gave Abraham three promises, a great nation, a land of Canaan, and through his offspring seed, all nations would be blessed. But the promise to Abraham and his decadence was conditionally on obedience. He made the Israelites, Abraham's decadence, a great nation, before they forfeited through their disobedience. God scattered them to win. He gave the land, he gave the land of Canaan, but they forfeited with disobedience. See, Jeremiah chapter 7, Chapter 1, verses 7 to 8, Hosea. Chapter 8. The lack of obedience to God caused them to lose the land forever, as Christ told them what happened when they rejected him. And this is from Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. And fulfilled with destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. And the seed promise was fulfilled through Christ. The Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1, 6 through 7. And um, and of course, chapter 43, verses 5 through 7, 44, chapter 1, chapter 44, verses 1 through 5, and 49, verses 6. That's all in Isaiah. And Galatians, chapter 3, chapter 3, of course, chapter 6, verses 3 through 16. So you folks can read this yourself. And the Zionists, the Zion, American Zionists, Christian Zionists don't want you to know this. And I had some pastors that showed me, showed me these scriptures about when it came to corruption, they lost the land. So they oh, well, God said we got it because Israel became a nation. See, don't merit. I uh, will continue on here. So, 
who are Abraham's offspring and heirs to the promise? It is those who are of Christ, God's true Israel, not some modern-day Israel nation created by the United Nations by rooting out the areas of occupants in 1948, nor is it some future apocalyptic physical Israel kingdom of God. So, first reference to Israel in the New Testament is applied to Jesus. It is Jesus who would be the shepherd of the people of my people Israel. That's by uh, Matthew chapter 2 verse 6, quoting Mi Micah chapter 5 verse 12. It would be through Jesus on the cross that God would help to help give it to Israel, give help to Israel his servant. And of course there's Luke chapter 1 verses 54. See also chapter 1 verses 68 through 79. So me and who was looking for the consolation of Israel find it in Jesus Christ, Jesus will save Gentiles and your people of Israel. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 25, 32, and 34. I'm not going to tell you folks, I'm not trying to be religious here, it's just, uh, this is based on his research with some chirping in this. And it's very interesting, that's why I read, I read these books as well, and I can understand where he's coming from. I'll continue on here. There are three main views of Christian anthropology in the book of Revelation. Premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism. Post after pre before refer to the time around a thousand years rule that Christ will appear to establish a rule over his earthly kingdom. Amillennialism is a view that God's kingdom is spiritual, not physical, at the end of the church age, which began on the day of Pentecost as described in Acts 2. Christ will return and follow judgment and establish a permanent reign in a new heaven and earth. I'm a Christian who believes in the amnesty view is the correct one. Premillennialism millennialism was commonly held by the pre anglican church. In the late 1600s, premillennialism gained popularity among the American Puritans. But the 18th century theologian Jonathan Edwards was a post-millennialist and his view attracted many followers into the 19th century until it fell from vogue and was replaced among most fundamentalists by pre-millennialism, which, which is still the most popular view among Christians today. To those who of those views, premillennialism and post-millennialism deny or prevent scripture. God's kingdom is spiritual and it is the church Paul referred to the church as the household of God in 1 Timothy 3 verse 15. Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16. Stop by right there, Good friend of mine, good guy. It says here, Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16 that the church would be built on a profession of faith. And then he, Peter, would receive the keys to the kingdom. Jesus told his disciples that some of them would not taste death until they saw the Son of Man come into his kingdom. Interesting little um, quote there, right? Neither Peter nor the other disciples are still alive away from the kingdom. That prophecy was fulfilled in Acts 2 when the kingdom was established on the day of Pentecost. If the, guard, if the kingdom has not yet been established, then Christ is a liar. You got, you got a train coming by. Let's just hang out. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's that, that thing, that thing's coming by pretty quick. All right, good. Now it's done. You're here now. Now head, head north. As for the rise of single antichrist to battle Christ and persecute Christians, that term is found in only four verses. None of them is in Revelation. The antichrist or antichrist is are those who deny Christ. Deny. He came in the flesh and denied God, according to First John chapter two, verses eighteen to nineteen. First John chapter two, verse twenty to twenty three. 1 John chapter 4 verses 2 through 3 and 2 John chapter 1 verse 7. John writes in the writes in 1 John 2 18 that many anarchists have arisen. If there is one antichrist and he is yet to come, then John is a liar. So that means you're gonna have a lot of people who are quote anti-Christian or anti-Jesus are coming out of the woodwork. Neither ISIS nor ISIS nor Russia nor any other entity has been or will be named by pre-millennialists pre millennial, millennialists, yeah, millennialists can rise and be the Antichrist as pre-millennialism proponents claim and be the spiritually correct. Antichrists are everywhere because anyone opposing the Christ is one. 
The, the, po the point is that most people hold foolish beliefs about the book of Revelation, about the modern physical Israel, without ever questioning the source of that belief. And if one dares to raise questions, he or she is quickly shot out with charges of anti-Semitism or worse. Apocalypse dominates conventional wisdom. Apocalypse designers and dominate American foreign policy, forcing all U.S. presidential hopefuls and most prominent politicians to don a Yarmu moke and general select before Israel's prime minister and the Jerusalem wall if they have any desire to be considered relevant on the national political scene. Yes, and I do say APAC is treason. It doesn't mean I don't hate Jews, I don't hate Israel, but we have other people trying to get us involved. We have to support this country or else it's nothing more than pure blasphemy. And John Jay will attest to that. Just read once again for those papers two through five to get a clue. All right, so we're going to come on continue here. For most of the past 70 years, American foreign policy haven't predicted on what is in Israel's best interest. As John, Joe Bo Biden said in 2007, imagine our circumstance in the world where there are no Israel. How many battleships would be there? How many troops would be stationed? Imagine indeed, it is a high time for that to change in America's interest put first before Israel, before Saudi Arabia, and before any other nation. But apocalypse keeps us rooted in the status quo and therefore involved in perpetual war. Yes, so we have to listen to foreign politicians, their bureaucrats, their cronies, and the banksters as well to tell us how to think, how to wipe our rear ends, and who can I can talk to or not. And it's pretty neat because he's using everything in the biblical perspective because you got a lot of folks out there claiming to be Christians by faith and they can't even tie their own shoelaces. And you got others out there that claim to be Jewish and they lie to their teeth, that's why I call them Jainas. There are a bunch of them out there. And I don't have to say any words. If you hear my past episodes, you understand where I'm coming from. Always got to look at things in the bigger picture. Don't take these um, faith values for granted. Observe responsibly. Go further in what they tell you. Think for yourself. Even people who are Christian by faith, and many of them are mavericks. Jesus Christ was one, according to the scriptures. I don't care if you, it doesn't matter if you believe in Bible, God, or Jesus or not. But all you gotta do is read. He was a rebel. He was a pain in the banksters' necks. Especially with the money changing in the temple. He found that blasphemy he wasn't afraid to call him out and create a ruckus. And one thing for sure about Zionism, like I told people, they are not Judaic. They are a separate movement. Israel first. I say no way, no how. And not against the people that live in that nation. There's some beautiful folks out there, but they got some political bobbleheads as well, which they are not very pleased with. Alright, so I'll do one more here. Yeah, I know I've been talking a little bit. Woo, almost an hour. Wow. But not too bad. So this one actually came out June 1st. From American Free Press it says here, armed teachers save students. And this is written by Mark Edison. I'd like to set the top here. After 10 years of success, one tech school superintendent Stanley firmly stands firmly in support of his armed staff model to protect pupils. While the media and other school professionals contacted him previously, he's surprised to have not received calls after the recent Santa Fe Texas shooting. This is what Mark Edison has to say. Sitting in his school office at Harold Independent School District in rural North Central Texas, Superintendent David Theory half expected the phone to ring off the hook in the aftermath of yet another murder by gunfire at Santa Fe High School in Gallatin County, Texas on May 18th. It's been 10 years now since Theory made headlines nationally and internationally by taking the lead in implementing a controversial self protection school protection plan that consists of training qualified teachers and staff and staff to carry concealed farms and maintain the crucial elements of uncertainty and surprise. To give any would-be school shooters reasons to think twice. Of course, the success of such program is mainly measured by simply noting that no one carrying a farm with a criminal intent 
has tried to enter or attack the district school facilities as Harold School Board approved Ewers' defense plan. Contacted by AFP, he said he was tad puzzled that AFP was the first and only media to have called him as of May 21st regarding the events at Santa Fe High School. I got some calls after Parkland, the, shoot, the Florida shooting, school shooting in February 18, 2018, and after Sandy Hook, December 12, December 2012 in Connecticut, but not after this one. It's kind of weird. He said believing that calls from media and officials from other school districts would be more likely since Santa Fe is in his home state. The which school district implemented that armed staff approach now also being implemented in some Florida school districts. The use of a for murder in a school scene was considered less frequent than it is today, meaning that he's something of a pioneer in this area. He is modest about his role, he's passionate about his purpose and effectiveness. His views cut like a knife that arguably flimsy suggestions for roundtable discussion from all sides in the gun debate. And other politically correct measures called for by Texas Governor Greg Abbott and most other officials. Only Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has more specific, having recently said this, that the issue is not about guns, it's about us. We have devalued lives, whether it's through abortion, whether it's the break of a family, through violent movies, and particularly violent video games. Well, he's, well, he's saying people are not doing things together. Like, I see it sometimes out in the streets in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Just have the kids watch it. I give, give them, a, give them a, a, a tab and they've been watching their cartoons. You know, just, like, you know, communication. Just, like, zombified. But the anyway, who has been as well of the curve in that regard, says that those fixate, fixate on guns don't believe in the Constitution. Copies of which are on the walls in his school. School. For years, he has been acutely aware that most media constantly place the blame on the existence and availability of firearms while downplaying or ignoring various com- corrupted factors that adversely affect the mentality and sociability of school pupils. That includes the regiment education system itself, which operates on the basis of what theory generally calls humanism, an anti-Christian worldview which posits that human beings. Uh, evolutionary accident of the universe who lives, whose lives have no meaning or moral foundation. In addition, be basic emotional and psychological problems as well as broken unsupervised homes and various other factors far removed from firearm issues, all playing a role in inducing uncivilized behavior often aggravated by use of psychotropic drugs that have been linked to a number of teenage school shooters over the years. The remark that much of the resistance to the Herald district approach seems to stem from the ba- basic fact that many people have brought into the notion that teachers cannot be trusted in such role. In the years prior to the Santa Fe shooting incident, the district leadership reportedly had made plans to protect a school via Texas School Marshall Plan introduced and approved in 2013 by the state legislature. That model is based on Army external employees tasked with defending schools. After the May 18th shooting, President of Santa Fe Board of Trustees that the district policy procedures worked and that it was not a failure for the procedure that accounted for the incident. However, the red took AFP that there are some things pub- the public needs to understand. Considering that Santa Fe, like many school districts across the nation, has on site campus police officers. These officers are not for defense. They're for dealing with kids who get rough with other kids to protect kids from kids, he said. He added that while there are instances in which pub campus officers have provided some measure of defense, the problem is that they wear, wear highly visible uniforms and external pistols, so any would-be shooter can easily get familiar with the officer's work patterns and locations as they come and go. They are places much more confidence in his district model of non-uniform internal staff using concealed carry approach. DeWitt noted in passing that the Herald District have approved ammunition that fragments when used to minimize physical damage in the event staff having to fire their weapon, but that policy has changed to allow for a standard round. There are going to get real life ammo, DSA, referring to any would-be attacker.
interesting. So one of those things, my friend, this person here, Skip Stevens, made a statement. This news article shouldn't be on headlines on every newspaper across the USA. Instead, we only read about those wise policies. Very wise policies. We, we only read about those very wise policies in American Free Press. Why do the liberals insist to continue to leave our school children unprotected? Why? Because why? Because they believe the people themselves are too damn stupid to do it. They want to have us leave our security aids in the hands of the government. Remember 9-11? On a down-to-earth point of view, firearm-free zone was taken advantage by the terrorists and hijackers. Just to say that on a down-to-earth point of view, you know how I am on 9-11, but put that fact out there. They can't refute it. It's the damn truth. And this is why, my friends, when I tell folks, the police are obligated, obligated to protect you as an individual, including the schools. Start doing your homework. Even people from those quacks from March for Our Lives. I call them, like one guy, Thomas, Thomas um, Car- Caravaro Stewart from the Rhetoric Republic. March for Our Lives. That's right. They're liars. They're hypocrites. Orwellian snowflakes with listening to their Orwellian masturbating. Or vampires. I do respect Mr. Thewis' proposal and actually speak louder than words. Let them figure out who is carrying it and who is not. When you got someone in uniform, you can study their patterns. It's very strategic, my friends. Hook and da- dagger happens everywhere. Great article. I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank Mr. Anderson for putting that out. And you, for all you folks that should support AmericanFreePress.net, be a subscriber, digital paper, get a digital edition or, bo- or print edition. It's very cool. And um, I'm, I'm a subscriber, but I'm going to actually, um, I get their alerts a lot. I'd like to be a subscriber ASAP because um, they do have a lot of merit. And they are being attacked too by all those uh, Charlton entities such as the In Defamation League, Southern Poverty Law Center. Etc. Remember, when it comes to the side of the Poverty Law Center, you know what their business is? Racial division. If not, if people unite, they're down the two. Okay, my friends, that is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us on your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you can send something that's interesting, you want to check out. Whatever you do, please send your correspondences with the quorum. You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Breaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Minds.com, Fujinet.club. Want to be a patron? Patreon.com forward slash book book three with three eyes. Your donations would be great. You hit me on Gab, free speech version of Twitter, and I'm on yours.org and oneway.org. And I'll let you know if I'm going to be a more on these decentralized social media sites. In addition, you can email me at localluck number three at gmail.com or to encrypt it once. Looky luck numbers zero three at protonmail.com. You know what? I haven't did a song on this show for a long time. And um, I know I did one on my uh, Euphor- Euphor- Euphonic Parasolo- Parasology show with Cosmo Gyro. And this song is very inspiring and it's got something great about it. If you haven't heard the show, check it out. We interconnect in a lot, of, and, and, and interconnect really well. And one of the songs I love they did is called "Time." Set this world alight. And the lyrics are very good. Maybe some growling here to just listen to the lyrics and the musicianship. There are my boys from South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, homegrown, South Florida made. Yes, live bands are kicking ass down here. So anyone else that's not happening. You're in your cave for too long. So I'm going to play this tune. And please spread it around. Okay? Alright, my friends. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. That includes prayer for Nicaragua, Yemen, Thailand, South Africa, anywhere else in the world that being oppressed by tyrannical governments. They need this, our blessings, regardless. When it comes to stuff like this, holocausts, and many other crimes, 
it always affects the rank and file, such as you and I. All right? Take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading love. And may your guardian spirits be with you. Enjoy the tune. So 